So Anthony Martial has been linked with the move away from Old Trafford this summer. Is he going to go? I don't have a clue, but let's take a look back at that starting 11 from his Manchester United debut against Liverpool in September 2015, when his goal almost made Martin Tyler break his voice box. David De Gea. This was an awkward time for David De Gea. He'd started the season chucked in the reserves while Manchester United prepared to sell him to Real Madrid. The man probably had his bags packed and Spanish Villa picked out when a dodgy fax machine ended those plans, and so he was forced to break the news to the missus that she'd be staying in the northwest of England for another few years. The ship has probably sailed in that Madrid move now, but he seems happy enough in Manchester and has since established himself as one of the very best in his position. Not bad for a lad who looked like he couldn't catch butter when he first arrived, Matteo Darmian. Alright, I've created this video a solid week in advance, so by the time this video goes out, Matteo Darmian could have his Manchester house sold up and he could be lining out on a pre-season friendly for an Italian club. Signed for £12 million in July 2015, he's been about as much use as a nun in a strip club, spent most of last season chucked under the stairs at Carrington somewhere, and now finally looks set to wipe the cobwebs out of his hair and sign for one of Napoli or Juventus. Chris Smalling. Chris Smalling is a 28 year old centre back who is approaching the 8th season of his Manchester United career. He's played 289 times for the club, that is only 11 games less than Emmanuel Man Vittage. He's got more pieces of silverware than half the England squad combined and yet he wasn't out in Russia with the lads. No, he was stuck on an island off the coast of Thailand. Yes, Thailand. Where he no doubt took an angry shot of whiskey every time Harry Maguire did something good. Daily Blind. Yep, these were the lonely dark days when Daily Blind was played as a centre half. And you wonder why you haven't won the title in five years. Now, in fairness, the Dutchman actually did a, quite a good job of centre back. It's just that 5'9", he wasn't exactly the tallest. Anyway, the modern day John O'Shea has just returned to Ajax after four years in England. Luke Shaw. Oh, Luke Shaw. This was four days before he went and broke his leg against PS so arguably this was the last time the world saw Luke Shaw, the exciting teenage left back. Since his injury he's emerged a broken character, seemingly lacking any desire or urgency on the pitch and clearly having developed a fondness for Jemmy Donuts. Neither his club or international boss seems to trust him, with both viewing Ashley Young, a man who by all rights should not be keeping a £30 million left back out of a team, as a better alternative. It's just sad. Michael Carrick. I'll be honest, when Michael Carrick made the move to Old Trafford in 2006, I never envisaged him ending his career there. Fair play to him, 464 appearances and countless trophies later, he's hung up the boots and has become a coach at Old Trafford. Bastian Schweinsteiger. One of the most hyped Old Trafford signings in recent years, and with good cause, the man had just won a World Cup the previous summer. Bastian Schweinsteiger was a shell of the man who dominated Europe at Bayern Munich though. He played 31 games in all competitions under Louis van Gaal, before Mourinho took one look at him and chucked him as far away from the first team as humanly possible. Probably for the best, considering he's now at Chicago Fire. Juan Mata. It's weird to think Juan Mata has spent longer at Old Trafford than Stamford Bridge, considering how revered he was at the Blues. The Spaniard has been decent for Man United, but let's face it, he's never hit the heights of his 20 goal season for Chelsea. He's still at Old Trafford as a shining beacon of one of the few things David Moyes actually got right. Ander Herrera. Ander Herrera is another man who survived the Old Trafford exodus in recent years, just about. Yes, that 28 year old is a fan favourite at the club, with the supporters loving his passion and bite. He also has a knack for important goals, but here Here's my question for United fans. Take away his snarls, his beating of the badge, how good is he really? Memphis Depay. Oh good god. Well this was just a stain of the Louis van Gaal era. Luckily for Manchester United fans he was removed very quickly. He was signed in 2015 for £25 million and the hype about this fella. I don't know if it was the fact his mother kept tipping him for Real Madrid. Settle down woman, let's see if he can cross the ball without hurting himself first. Maybe it was the dream chaser tattoo on his back. But whatever it was, I mean the hype, it was just ridiculous. In the end there was no substance. He'd scored 28 goals in 40 games for PSV the previous year and then went and scored 7 in 53 for Man United. He's currently doing the business in League 1 with Leon, firing home 22 goals last season. Well done Memphis, but let's not forget Remy Cabela also looked a world beater in that league. Mara Fellaini. Oh Marwan, love him or hate him, he usually has an impact on the game. He gets a bad rep because he looks like Screech and generally has the ball control and coordination of a dead donkey. The fact he's a remnant of the David Moyes era certainly doesn't help his case, but uh, he is effective. He's recently signed a new contract at the club and if he sees it out, it will mean the Belgian will have been at Old Trafford for 7 years, which is longer than Eric Cantona, Andy Cole and Ruud van Nistelrooy. But I think we all saw that coming. 